Gethsemane. This is session six of our online Sunday school. This is for Sunday, May 3rd, 2020, and I am Miss Kendra. Before we begin, let's open with a quick word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for each one of these students and adults that are listening in, Lord, and even those that can't be with us. We just thank you that you are there for us um, in spirit when we need you and wherever we're at, even when we cannot be together. And we just thank you for the fellowship and we pray that we can continue to come up with creative ideas for fellowship at this time, Lord. We pray for those first responders, help to give them strength, Lord, and those essential workers, help to give them strength in this time and keep them well. Um, and Lord, if there are any other prayer requests, you know what those are in those, these families right now. I pray that you be with them as well at this time. And for all of this, we praise you and in your name we pray. Amen. Well, hello again. It is session six and it's May. This is crazy town. Oh my goodness. Um, we're in May now, guys. Um, the weather is getting nicer though. We're getting more nice days outside. So hopefully you're getting outside and you're enjoying the uh, weather, even though it's a little, um, little muddy, but We'll get there, man. That's all part of the process. Um, so uh, for this week, um, once again, we're doing the Spark House activities. Um, they have a video posted as well as linked in the email. You can listen to her. You can listen to me. You can listen to both of us. Whatever works best with your family. Doesn't matter to me. But that's what we are doing for today. And this week is um, some information about the first Christians, which is really interesting and ties into some fun stuff that I think is relevant to what we are, what is going on with us. Um, speaking of fellowship, and we're going to be talking more about that later, before I forget, this Saturday at 6 p.m., remember that PG movie night we were going to have before everything got a little crazy? Guess what? We're not only doing a, not PJ movie night, we're in PJs all the time. We're gonna dress up like crazy costumes if you want, or if you wanna wear church clothes, whatever works. We're gonna have a dress up movie night this Saturday night. And we're inviting everyone, so teens, adults. I'm gonna send out an email blast to the entire congregation of stuff that we can do together. And hopefully we'll all be watching a movie that night at around the same time. I'm gonna have a suggested movie, but you can do whatever you want. Um, but I'm gonna have some fun activities and hopefully you can fellowship with someone that evening. So. I am so, so excited and I wanted to share that with you guys as well. So that's going to be called Dress Up Movie Night this Saturday, May, I think it's 8th, um, at 6 p.m. So I apologize if I got that date wrong. Um, but anyway, that's Dress Up Movie Night. So um, the lesson for today is about the first Christians. And obviously we've had Jesus' death and resurrection. Last week we talked about uh, the road to Emmaus where the two guys were talking with Jesus, didn't realize it till they get that aha moment. They're like, whoa, it's Jesus. And then they go seven miles back. Oh, and by the way, did you clock seven miles yet? If not, you totally need to do that because that's, well, not seven, seven, that's 14. It's a lot of miles that they went. They went back and told everyone about Jesus. So now we're moving into the first Christians. Jesus has death and resurrections happened. And people are, that are followers of Jesus are going, what is this going to look like? What do we stand for? What's important to us? As we're noticing right now that we can't fellowship physically together, we're noticing what is important to us as a congregation and what's keeping us together in our love in Christ. And the first Christians had to do that as well. So I think we kind of share them with some similarities with that. Now, the only cool thing that we do not share, one of the big cool things we do not share with the first Christians is it was dangerous to be a believer in Christ. Um, you know, we're kind of dealing with a virus, but um, you could go outside and say, I love Jesus and you may get a high five. That's it, maybe from a distance, you know, social distance high five from someone walking by. Um, but if you did that back then, you could get arrested, maybe a guard would beat you, you may get in jail or worse. So it was a little dangerous to be a first Christian, but yet they were doing these things anyway because they knew it was important. So um, the first Christians um, and the scripture that I'm going to read today centers, I think anyway, around a big important word that I want to share with you guys today. I know all of you know what this word is. 
is that word? Exactly. It's the word help. Now, take a minute, pause me, and I want you to discuss with each other what the word help means. Ready, set, pause. Did you come up with some neat definitions on what the word help is? Rather, what it means to help someone, or if you're screaming for help, or if you raise your hand in class and say, I need help, or I don't know, you've got your um, leg stuck in a trap and you're like, I really, I don't know if you get your leg stuck in a trap, that's kind of silly. But anyway, I have the Webster de definition, that's the dictionary fancy definition of the word help. It says, to do something that makes it easier for someone to do a job, to deal with a problem, to aid or assist someone, to make something less severe, ooh, I like that one, to make something more pleasant or easier to deal with, or to give yourself or another person food or drink. So like, have you been helped in a restaurant? Help could also be that. So. I want you to think about today, in today's world, how we are helping others. Because what help looked like in January is different than what help looks like right now in the, in the beginning of May. So I want you to look at each other again, pause me for a minute, and talk about different ways that we are helping each other through the situation we're living through today. Ready, set, pause. Did you think about some ideas? Maybe uh, your help, maybe your family helps to bring someone groceries. And obviously for my smaller ones, you can only do so much, but maybe you sit in the car as someone takes groceries and you can give a nice friendly wave. Maybe you can help by sending a letter to someone in the nursing home or someone that you know, or giving a phone call. Maybe I know some of our members at Gethsemane are helping with the food pantry to make sure that those that may not have food are still getting food. Um, I know there's more. Those are just the first ones off the top of my head. Um, well, the first responders are helping every day. There's there's lots and lots of ways. Oh, oh, we can help by wearing masks, those of you that have to go out. That's helping protect others. There's all sorts of different ways that we are being creative in helping each other move past this. So I think the word help is really important. So <clears throat> here we go. Here's our Bible verse for today. And I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I think some of it's important because I want you to see how the first Christians are learning how best to help each other. The first one comes from Acts 2, and I'm going to start with verse 43. We'll read through it together. If you want to take a minute and pause and find it yourself, that's cool too. It says, awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. That's the disciples. All who believed were together and had all things in common. I think that's cool because us at Gethsemane, we have a big thing in common. We're followers of Christ. Basically anyone that's going through this at church and has to do things online. We're doing things online, but we're still followers of Christ. And it's very exciting as a side note I may just see a screen, but it is so cool every Sunday to see on Pastor June's thing to see that there's been like 100 views or 120 views. I can't see you every day, but I know you're out there, that there are believers of Christ out there, and we all have that in common. So anyway, <clears throat> they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. So they're really helping to say, this isn't just mine. I'm going to keep on to this shirt. It's my favorite. They're sharing it with others that may need it. They're helping. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. Oh, well, at least they got to do that and we don't. We have We can't really meet together right now, but they got to do that. And we know now, I think, more than ever how important that is. Praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Because the more this got out, it was like, hey man, I want to be a part of this. And I said I was just going to read part of that, but I wound up reading all of it. It's pretty good to know. 
Now the other part is from Acts 4, starting with verse 32. So we're going to read a little more about those early Christians and how they helped people. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. Whoa, so that's yours, that's mine. They're really, the first Christians were really into sharing stuff, and that's good. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. So like the dudes at Emmaus that ran all the way back to tell, everyone's talking about how Jesus has rose, and they are followers of Jesus. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. So that saying, and back then land was really important, but no one was without a need. They provided for each other. They cared and they helped one another, just as we 2000 years later are doing today as a fellowship of a congregation. So with that said, this is, this is my own extension that I want you to do. And I think it's even mentioned in the spark house thing. I want you sometime this week to do a bit of homework. You are going to think of how you can help someone in your congregation. And we came up with those ideas earlier. Maybe um, you want to call someone and say hi. Maybe you want to write a letter. Maybe for those that are more technologically savvy, you can have a Zoom or a Skype or a FaceTime with someone in the congregation. And I know your families will think of even more creative ways that my one brain isn't thinking about. But I want you to think about a creative way that you can help someone. Maybe the grocery thing could be a way that you could help. Um, there's lots of things that you can do, but to know that we are a fellowship of believers and that even though we're apart, we are still one and we can still help each other. Now, wait a minute. I believe I forgot something. I haven't shared my fun fact number six about myself. You know, wait a minute. Oh, I've got an idea. That'll be how I'll help all of you. Yeah. Fun fact number six is I love to bake. I love to bake. I've always been in like baking since I was little. My mom, I'd make a big mess in the kitchen and she didn't want me to do it all the time. But my grandma, she let me make a mess and she let me bake all the time. And I just, I just love to bake till this day. And you know what I could do for all of you? I could share a recipe with all of you. Oh, yes, yes. You know what? Since all of this started, you know, at the beginning where it was like hard to find a lot of essential things, we couldn't find bread where I live anywhere. So I was like, you know what? It's been a long time. I'm going to make some bread. So I got out my great grandmother's recipe and that thing's like, it's, I, I have a copy of her original cookbook. It's at least over a hundred years old. And I'm sure it, a lot of bread recipes are similar, but this one's very special to me. And I got it out and we baked it. And my, my daughters and I had so much fun. Even though bread's available, we still do it like once a week and they enjoy helping me put it together. So what I'm going to do in this email is I will include my bread recipe for all of you. So that's a way that I can help fellowship with you. I can share a little piece of myself and give you my great grandmother's 100 uh, year old recipe. So maybe those of you that are baking savvy people, you can compare it, but I love, love, love baking. Love, love, love baking. So anyway, there's fun fact number six. So I will share that in my email. So let's go ahead and say a quick prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Um, thank you that even though we are apart, we can still be creative and we are one in you. We are one in Christ and we can continue to fellowship um, and praise you and help each other out. Please be with us throughout this week and keep us well and, and in your name we pray. Amen. So guys, that's all I have for you this week. Um, until next time, do well, be well, and peace out. Yeah. Bye. <gasps> 
All right, Kissimmee, I wanted to show you guys real quick the ingredients that you're going to need for the bread recipe if you guys wanna make it. Um, first of all, you're going to need some yeast. This is the stuff that makes the magic happen. You're gonna need some butter. Um, you're gonna need a tiny bit of sugar. Did you guys hear that? Anyway, um, and you're gonna need a little bit of milk. And you're going to need a whole bunch of flour. No, no, Let's see, no. one. Oh, oh, I'm forgetting salt. Let me reach up here. Let me reach up here and get a... Ah! Sheepy, what in the world? Why were you up there, sheep? You are marshmallows. I just bought these. Ugh. It's a good thing bread doesn't call for marshmallows. Ugh.